One day, a cop finished his work early and decided to pay a surprise visit to his mother. When he entered the house, he realized his mother wasn't there. Instead, he found an unknown man sleeping in her bedroom. Mrs. Sutton sat on the couch in her living room and caressed her knee after a wave of throbbing pain forced her to slow down. A few minutes ago, she was standing on her toes while cleaning the wall-mounted cabinet in her kitchen when her right knee began hurting. She lived alone in her house, where her son's laughter used to echo decades ago when he was in school. Now, her only child, Luis, worked as a police officer. He never had time to visit his lonely mother or call her to ask how she was. After Mrs. Sutton's husband passed away five years ago, she had no option but to live alone in her tiny house. From house repairs to grocery runs, the older woman had learned how to do everything independently. She never asked anyone for help, not even Louis. However, Mrs. Sutton now felt her aging body wouldn't allow her to live independently. The pain in her knees had started bothering her while doing simple household chores. It was time for her to ask her son for help, but she was sure he wouldn't bother visiting her. She felt sad whenever Louis refused to see her, but she also felt relieved knowing Louis loved his work and was content with his life. One day, Mrs. Sutton was leaving her house for a grocery run. She stepped out of her house wearing her knitted sweater and inserted the key in the main door's keyhole. She turned the key, hoping it would lock the door, but the key didn't move. She bent forward and tried to lock the door again to no avail. It looks like the door's lock isn't working, she said. What should I do now? Instead of leaving for the supermarket, Mrs. Sutton entered her house and took off her coat. Then she slid her phone out of her bag and searched for Louis' number in the phone book. She squinted her eyes while searching for her son's name and pressed the phone against her ear, waiting for Louis to answer her call. Hi, Mom. Louis said, Hi, honey. I hope you are not busy, Mrs. Sutton replied apologetically. I am at the police station, working on a critical case right now, Louis replied sternly. Oh, Mrs. Sutton took a deep breath. My main door's lock is stuck, Louis. I thought you could come home to fix it later today. Is that pause? No, Mom. I can't visit you today. I'll stay at the police station till midnight. But, sweetheart, can you send someone else to fix the lock? Mom, I'll talk to you later. I don't think I'll be able to send anyone to your place. But, I was thinking. Louise ended the call before Mrs. Sutton could complete her sentence. She looked at her phone screen and shook her head in disappointment. This boy never has time for his mother. I'll have to look for a solution on my own, she said before heading towards the main door. A few days later, Mrs. Sutton was organizing her closet when her cupboard door suddenly became loose. She had pulled the door to open the closet, but the lower hinge came off and the wooden door was barely hanging. Oh no! Mrs. Sutton gasped and pushed the door back so it didn't fall off. Since her bed was right beside the closet, she feared the door would fall on her while she was asleep. I need to call Louis to fix this. Mrs. Sutton said, while dialing her son's number. Hi, Mom. Louise answered the call. Louise, I need your help. Mrs. Sutton replied in a shaky voice. What happened? Is everything all right? The cupboard's door will fall off any minute, and I'm scared. What if it falls on me when I'm sleeping? You know how heavy it is. Could you fix it, Louise? Please. Mom, I can't come to your place tonight but I will visit you tomorrow. I promise. Tomorrow? Yes, Mom. I'm working on another case today. Okay, Mrs. Sutton took a deep breath. I'll wait for you. The following day, Mrs. Sutton prepared her son's favorite snacks because she expected him to visit her in the evening. She took out the best serving trays from her china cabinet. He would be here any minute now, she thought. Little did she know that Louis never intended to visit her. She waited for four hours, but there was no sign of him. Exhausted after waiting for Louis, Mrs. Sutton dialed his number, but he didn't answer any of her calls. Why does he always do this to me? She wondered. Ouch! Mrs. Sutton screamed in pain. A few days later, 
when the damaged door fell off the cupboard and hit her knees. She lifted the heavy door from her knees and screamed in pain. Once she gathered herself, the older lady stood up and searched for her phone. I need to get this fixed as soon as possible, she said. She dialed Louis' number and waited for him to answer. Hi, mom, Louis said. Louis, she cried in pain. The cupboard door fell on my knee and I can barely walk now. It hurts too much. Please come and fix it, honey, please. Okay, okay, Louis replied. Calm down, mom. I'll fix it on the weekend, I promise. You better keep your promise this time, Louis, Mrs. Sutton said before hanging up. The following Friday, Louis finished his work early, so he decided to visit his mother in the evening. However, she was not there when he reached her house. Since he had a duplicate of her house keys, he opened the lock and went inside. Let me see which closet needs to be fixed, Louis thought before heading towards his mother's bedroom. However, Louis froze in his tracks when he opened the bedroom door. He saw an older man sleeping on Mrs. Sutton's bed. Who are you? Louis shouted. Hey, I'm Michael. The stranger woke up and squinted his eyes while looking at Louis. Michael? I know who you are, Louis said. I sent you to jail for shoplifting at a drugstore. Louis arrested Michael from a drugstore two years ago after the owner caught him stealing. Lewis took his case and ensured the older man was sentenced to imprisonment. When the police officers were taking Michael to the prison van, he called Lewis' name loudly and said, I'll take away the most precious thing in your life. Just wait and watch. What are you doing here? Lewis asked Michael, who was still sitting on Mrs. Sutton's bed. Where is my mother? Your mother? Michael gave Lewis a confused look. Mrs. Sutton is my mother and you were sleeping in her bedroom. Louis yelled, tell me the truth before I call my team and send you back to prison. Hey, I just came here to repair the closet door. Your mother calls me for house repairs, Michael said. Don't lie to me, Michael. Louis warned him. I'm telling the truth. Please don't call the cops again. The older man pleaded. Suddenly, Louis heard the front door unlock and saw his mother enter the house. Mom, where have you been? He asked her worriedly. Oh, Louis, I wasn't expecting you, honey, Mrs. Sutton said. I was at the grocery store. What is Michael doing in your bedroom? He's my friend, Louis. I asked him to stay because I wanted to cook dinner for him. But how do you know him? He helps me repair things around the house. He fixed the door lock and my closet door, Louis. He's super talented. Louis frowned after hearing his mother's response. How did you find him? Did he approach you himself? The worried son inquired. Do you remember Mrs. Ronald? She lives down the street. Mrs. Sutton asked. Yes, Louis nodded. She told me Michael had recently shifted into our neighborhood and was looking for work. I immediately contacted him when I learned he previously worked as a builder and was quite familiar with house repairs. But you don't even know him, Mom. Michael had worked for many of our neighbors before I hired him, Louis, Mrs. Sutton assured her son. There's no need to worry about his background. Then the older lady went inside her kitchen and began preparing dinner. Now that you are here, please don't leave without having dinner, Louis. A few minutes later, Mrs. Sutton served Louis and Michael dinner and sat with them at the dinner table. Louis, there's something I wanted to tell you, she said. Sure, Mom, Louis replied. What is it? Michael and I, we're together. Mrs. Sutton looked at the ground and smiled. He's my boyfriend. Louis stopped midway while taking a bite of the pasta his mother had prepared. His eyes widened and he looked at Michael before turning to Mrs. Sutton. What? Yes, that's true, honey. Mrs. Sutton smiled. Lewis didn't say anything to his mother at that time. He waited for Michael to leave before he told his mother about her boyfriend's past. Mom, do you know Michael is an ex-prisoner? Lewis asked his mother. He was in prison for two years. I caught him shoplifting at a drugstore. What? Mrs. Sutton couldn't believe her ears. He never told me about this. 
He just said he was a builder. Trust me, Mom, Louis said. You need to get rid of him. Since Louis often ignored her calls and messages, Mrs. Sutton thought this was his attempt to make her feel lonely. She thought her son was lying and decided to confront her boyfriend the next day. I wanted to talk to you about something important, Michael, Mrs. Sutton told her boyfriend. Have you ever been to prison? Michael looked at his feet and nodded. It's true, he said. I knew your son would tell you he arrested me two years ago. Mrs. Sutton felt betrayed because she thought her boyfriend had told her everything about his past. She always thought she could trust him. But that was not the case anymore. And she had no intention of giving him a second chance. I don't want to be with you, Michael, she said sternly. Please leave. But I'm not the same person anymore, sweetheart, Michael said. I love you. I don't want to listen to any of your lies. Please leave, Mrs. Sutton pointed towards the door. Later that evening, Mrs. Sutton called Louis and told him she had gotten rid of Michael. She thanked her son for informing her about his past and apologized for not trusting him earlier. Meanwhile, Louis felt relieved that his mother was not in touch with the ex-convict. To celebrate his little achievement, he went to the local pub that weekend, unaware that he would witness something strange. Inside, he saw Michael sitting at the bar counter with his head resting on it. It seemed like he was crying, so Louis followed his instinct and approached him to ask what had happened. I really love your mother, Louis. Michael cried. I'm not who you think I am. Oh, please. I don't want to listen to your lies. Louis rolled his eyes. Do you know why I stole medicines at the drugstore two years ago? Why? Those medicines were for my dying wife. I didn't have money to buy medicines, so stealing them was the only way to save her. Michael wiped a tear off his cheek, but I couldn't save her. I'm so sorry. Louis patted Michael's back. Your mother reminds me of my late wife, Michael said. That is the only reason why I love spending time with her. She's as sweet as my wife. That evening, after listening to and observing Michael for hours, Louis realized the man's feelings for Mrs. Sutton were pure. He had no evil intentions and just loved spending time with her. The following day, Louis went to his mother's place and told her about his conversation with Michael. I was wrong, Mom, he said. But how can I trust him again? How do I know he's not lying to me again? Mrs. Sutton shrugged. Mom, I have been working with criminals for years now, and I can easily tell who's lying. Louis smiled. That man is telling the truth this time. Later that night, Mrs. Sutton invited Michael to her place and told him she had forgiven him for hiding his past. Michael was over the moon and thanked Louis for telling his mother the truth. Meanwhile, Louis felt happy that his mother finally found someone she could lean on. He felt content knowing she wouldn't feel lonely and that Michael was the right person for her. What can we learn from this story? Don't judge people by their past. Louis thought Michael was a bad person because he was an ex-convict. The police officer regretted judging Michael based on his past when he learned why the man shoplifted at the drugstore. Spend some time with your parents. Mrs. Sutton felt lonely after her husband passed away because Louis rarely visited her and never had time to call her. She wouldn't feel sad and lonely if he spent more time with her.